Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media live from Khan. I'm very happy to have with me today Nick Lawson. He's the global CEO at Essence MediaCom. Now we all know Essence MediaCom was formed last year when Essence and MediaCom were merged to form this entity. Nick, welcome to Exchange for Media. Thank you. Thanks, Nick, firstly, how's Khan been this year for you? Oh right, okay. So can so far really really good. I often think Can's kind of the best week and the worst week somehow in the year. The best week because we've got all of our clients, friends, family, all here. It's an amazing week, exchanging ideas, talking across it, but it is a long week, back to back meetings. So by the end of it, completely exhausted and we're like halfway through it already. Yeah. So well, what's the key takeaway for you for you from town this year? Is it just all about the meetings, or you had time to catch up on some sessions, or just clients meetings well, and business? Clearly, you're looking at, at you know clearly the work has to be a focus, but I think it's a chance for everybody to sort of sit back and reflect really mm-hmm. on um, what's happening in the industry, what the latest developments, and to think more laterally. So use more of our uh, right brain as opposed to our left brain. And think uh, about the bigger picture, I guess. Mm-hmm. Across, you know, across the industry, what are the big themes? What the, what are clients looking for? Because a lot of our clients are in the middle of either transformation programs and looking at the pace of change in the industry and how they match up to that. And they're looking for sort of ideas and viewpoints on it. I mean, so and there's all and the work is right at the centre of that. So it's been a year since the launch of Essence MediaCom. Yeah. So how has this panned out with both the agencies? Um, so it has, yeah, it's, it, it, it's been over 18, 18 months. Um, I think it's gone really, really well. I think we've rallied behind uh, breakthrough as a you know as a brand breakthrough for brands, mm-hmm. the new comms economy, which is a kind of line, a line. I think the clients really like it. We've sorted out all the leadership in every single market right across the world. Two really strong agencies, Essence really data-driven, Mediacom, a kind of a global powerhouse brand, putting those two together. And I think it's given us a really unique view on the marketplace. All of that's happened in the, you know, the last year. We've put it together, the leadership teams, and I think it's gone really, really well. Our, our, pe- our people really are engaged with it, and I think our clients are engaged with it as well. So the best of both agencies has come together to form one unified agency, basically. And uh, but if I were to ask, well, I, I often think as well. Of course, with with something like that, we no longer talk about it. Yeah. And that's a sure sign that it's sort of happened and gone. So seamless we don't really seamless. discuss it anyway. We don't really. No merger is seamless, I would say. But it's a good sign that we're just focused on the future now, and it's sort of behind mm-hmm. us. It's in in the rear. Uh, if I were to ask you to ass, uh, to assess how the performance has been over the last year globally, what would yeah. you say? What's well, been the highlights? I think the, hi- the highlights have definitely been the, the highlights have definitely been some of the work we've done. So, pretty much the most awarded agency um, in the you know in the world over the last year. I think we won more more awards than uh, any any of our counterparts. And I also you know and I so that's one indication. I think we've got our own internal metrics, net promoter scores and things like that. And I think they're they're trending upwards as well as staff um, happiness working on the clients as well, which is also trending upwards. So those three things, we've had double digit growth. And I think our our performance in local new business has been pretty, pretty strong. Markets like India, where it's been exceptionally strong. Uh, you know, you mentioned the word breakthrough, and you're one of the few agencies who actually use this term breakthrough. Mm-hmm. So, how has uh, you know how have you leveraged uh, data and technology to drive breakthrough? And even when it comes to delivering your client solutions, how has breakthrough helped you out? Being a breakthrough agency. Yeah, I, I think that um, where sort of where breakthrough really comes comes from or the breakthrough initiatives we've got a program called the breakthrough accelerator program and okay. it's a unique bit of IP I think to us which is um, really a process that we the process that we go through with our, with our clients that are great breakthrough thinking across the whole sphere of communications and it's really based on the, the following premise five years ago the, the effectiveness of advertising was 65 attributed to the actual messaging Okay. And 35 to the media placement and where it was. Okay. Okay, so the, the balance. Now it's the other way around. It's 65 on media placement and 35 on the messaging and the creative. 
And that's not because messaging has become less important. It's because the messaging has become less effective across the media. And breakthrough really is about trying to solve that equation, that balance, to make sure that we've got the right messaging in exactly the right place, doing exactly the right things right across the spectrum of communications. And really it's about solving that conundrum because I believe it should be back the other way around. Correct. Yes, of course the media is important, but the messaging and matching those two things is incredibly important. So everything that we're doing is really focused on that. How do we get more effective messaging at exactly the right moment, exactly the right time for our clients? So if you look at some of the work that we do in India, for example, World Coke is a great example. Because I think this is a great example of the type of thinking that we need. We need to think more laterally and outside the box. Everybody's talking about optimizing in their platforms, etc., all of which is really worthy. But actually, we need to sort of step outside of it and think about how we link all the communications together. So if you take some work like um, uh, Joke in a Bottle, Coke work, right, in, um, in India, it's a brilliant example of using the bottle as a medium and connecting people via, the, via humor on the bottle. And it's award-winning, but it works. Now, uh, you know, I, you, like you rightly said, content is king and that should be the focus. The messaging should be the focus. But uh, with the consumer now spread across multiple platforms and it, that just seems to be increasing day by day. So when you're talking about the omnichannel experience, what are the challenges that you face? Because like you said, we have to reach the consumer with the most effective messaging. But what's the challenge when it comes to it? Well, I think the, the the challenge is that, you know, modern, modern day marketers face really, is how do you balance that messaging across all of those Correct. things? How do you measure it? Yeah. Well, which is a, you know, which is another, which is another, another issue entirely. And no one solution is there. So how do you get across the wall gardens and how do you get effective results and effective measurement across the whole piece? Mm. And this is what we're really helping them with. And this is where AI and machine learning is really helping. This is when having a, a database of all of your clients' results to be able to balance the, to be able to be able to see the bigger picture in terms of all of the results that you see, and be able to advise clients what's likely to work and what means is not likely to work. But I think at the heart of it is sitting media people next to creative people where the magic really happens. And I think reintegrating. So if you look at what we're doing in the media work that we're doing inside of Open. OpenX, which is the Coke studio where we're putting yeah. creatives and media people together. This is the real sharp end, I think. And how we're going to adjust that equation is really going to be by sitting media people next to creative. And that's where the magic will happen. Because I believe if the best creative minds really understand media, will transform the kind of results that happen in the industry. But are the budgets also, just uh, overall, are mm -hmm. you seeing the budgets also increasing because with multiple platforms and things, or is yeah. it you are now squeezed with the same budget to just spread out across things, okay. or are clients increasing the budget so you have more leeway? I think that um, what clients are trying to do is they're trying to maximize the amount of money Correct. spent on me. Correct. I would say marketing budgets aren't going up necessarily. But they're looking, we're looking for efficiency to be able to spend the most amount of money we possibly can mm -hmm. on the platforms. So they're looking at the whole marketing pro, you know, end-to-end -end process and trying to make that more efficient so that more uh, money can be spent against mm -hmm. the consumer. Because the media market's increasing, you know, year on year on year. You know, you've spoken in the past in your previous interviews, which I saw about client-centric culture. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share an example of any of the work that you've done and the importance of keeping the consumer at the heart of everything you do? Well, I think like most things, you're, you're guiding sort of, you know, any company's guiding light has to be, you know, its clients. So making sure, you know, making sure that you're designing a system and tailoring a system that's tailor-made to what that client requires. And this is what comes back to, this is why I think it comes back to collaboration. I think it's kind of going to be the new superpower. We work with lots of different agencies right across the spectrum. But what we have to do is imagine ourselves walking a, a, a mile in our client's shoes. And this is the kind of most important thing, which means we don't design, there's not one system that fits all. We tailor everything that we do around a client's needs and around their ecosystem as well. Because we have to work alongside, we have to work alongside 
many different parts of the of, of a client's ecosystem. Uh, AI has been the top point this year and even last year and other technologies, but what are the new opportunities you see looking ahead? Well, I think that, um, you know, I, I have no doubt AI will, 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 will transform in the next five years. I guess the uh, a lot of the functions that we do in the media, media agency when it comes to kind of placement, um, a lot of the work that we do in optimization can be done via AI and will be done via AI in the future. I think the, the, the part that really we spent the first half of this interview talking about, the bit that needs to be solved, can't be solved by AI, right? Okay. And that's the integration. How do we integrate better? How do we get rid of the silos that client, you know, the clients okay. face in between, you know, performance and brand and how do we put all those together? These are the big issues that clients or the big questions that clients are asking for. And AI isn't going to solve those questions. Okay. Only human beings can. And actually having a vision around what, what type of industry we want to build in the future. And I think that ultimately is the number, number the question. It's this, I think that we're in danger sometimes in the, in the, in the advertising world. It's, of, of, it's a famous saying, isn't there, of optimizing ourselves into a suboptimal position. Okay. And I think media, but quite often I sort of see Earnest work where people, where we're really, really optimizing, but we're failing to see the big, the bigger the big picture, picture. Yeah. And very often you'll see a brand, you know, the performance results you might see on a brand are doing well. We're optimizing well, but the brand, the brand, the, the, the high level brand metrics are going, uh, are going backwards. So we're saying, so, and you've got to resolve those two things. And I think you're going to only really resolve those two things by taking a step back and looking at what's the heart of the problem. And I don't think as an industry we're asking ourselves enough what I would call open-ended questions because if you've got an open-ended question, it can lead you to a very different solution. solution. Whereas if you just simply say, optimise this plan as best you can, I'm sure you'll get the plan optimised, but we're not really asking ourselves is, is this plan making any difference to the client's overall business? Okay. So I think it's a it's balancing those two things. So asking ourselves those bigger questions at the same time is obviously optimizing, you know, optimizing the plan. So understanding the real business case for why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, now coming to the to coming to India, uh, how do you see in the Indian market performing? Well, it's been uh, India has been one of our top performers, and I'm sure you know. I don't know if you speak to Navin, our CEO, on a regular basis. You probably do speak to Navin on a regular basis, but I'm sure Navin will be, you know, will be telling you. I think uh, we won over 90 different media awards last well, year. Yeah. It was top of our new business uh, rankings by quite, you know, by quite some by quite some way. Um, he's really developed. I think that the some of the client work. Uh, that we've done there, I think it's been really truly impressive across Google, across Coke, across PNG. Uh, we've been really, really successful, you know, with those three brands. So I'm super proud of our Indian team and what they're doing. I thought it was a really seamless manager there as well, and they're really part of a really strong group. So I think Group M W P P India, pound for pound, pretty much our strongest. Uh, so Not our biggest market, but probably our strongest. I was market. going to ask you, where does India figure in the overall scale? Is it in your top five, top so ten? It's top or? ten. It's a top ten market, but I think if you look at the, if, I think we were very, very proud. And I think if you asked um, Mark, if you asked Mark Reed, I think he would probably say that India is the best example of sort of WPP Group M agency integration with it. real strength from both uh, the group and the individual brands working together seamlessly, I think, and really producing a real powerhouse, I think, of, a, uh, of an agency under a WPP umbrella. So I think they, they, they do a terrific job. And I, and I was in India last year, you know, when we, we, we launched it. And I had a – I still talk about it now, actually, but, you know, my, my India experience. I was supposed to go back, actually, so I apologise for that if uh, – I, po I apologise to Navin because I because I was supposed to go back, but I had to move it for a client meeting. So, but I should be there this year. Uh, later in the year. What's the market sentiment that you are, you know, kind of picking up? Because uh, the Group M T Y 
TN report is very optimistic. Mm. So, what is the market sentiment that you are picking up? Well, I think that uh, I, I think they're right to be optimistic because I think we've got some big stuff happening this year with the Olympics. Um, we've also got the Euros going on at the moment. So, it, 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 uh, you know, right, in, you know, in this market, we're right, we're right in the middle of that at the moment. We've got an election going on in the states. We've got an election going on in the UK where they've actually changed the amount you can spend on an election in the UK. So, so I think we're right to be cautiously optimistic, I guess, in terms of the overall spend in the market. Uh, we've just had, you just mentioned elections. We've had an election just now, uh, the general elections yes. in India. Yes. And we have three more state elections to go. So we don't have a majority government now. Yes. It's a coalition government. Yes. How do you see this impacting the industry as such, the ad uh, marketing industry? Well, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert on Indian politics, but I would, I, I would, I would argue, if you look at a lot of um, European politics, that some the nations that have done done pretty well, both economically and seem to be the happiest societies in Europe, are really based on coalition governments and centrist coalition governments, because it's enabled them to have long term long term plans, really around things that matter to people, education infrastructure, health, all of these things are incredibly important drivers of happiness within people. So I think that kind of st a steady centrist approach has worked extremely well in certain parts of Europe, if you look at like Denmark or uh, nations like that. Denmark's supposed to be the happiest nation in the world. I think, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, so I would say that I think it should be a good thing, okay. some form of co coalition uh, government as as long as it stays in place for enough time to make a difference. On that positive note, thank you so much, Nick, for your time. Nice, pleasure.